We'll come back and do a little more later. What a blessing it is to just be able to open our, heart, our hearts and our mouths and our voices and just sing and praise his dear name. Yes. Praise his dear name, he loved me so. Mm. Now I'm his and he's mine, I know. Mm. Well, I Amen. Yeah, we sang. We didn't sing, we sang. <laughs> Our instruments do not have strings on them, they got sprang on them. <laughs> and we don't have a problem saying y'all, it ain't, it ain't y'all. Ain't y'all looking good tonight, amen? Saints, not ain't. You know, I was, uh, I'm always, always kind of on the awares of, of unique little stories or something that pops up on my computer when I read and study and there are scriptures that jump out at me and, and, and I really enjoy it when, when the Lord gives me opportunity to, to kind of rethink something that I've always thought mm -hmm. uh, and then had, uh, well, howdy, y'all. <laughs> you guys come in late. I'm glad to see you. They, they just, when did you guys get back? Just now. Just now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We know what's coming up, don't we? <laughs> he makes cowboy coffee. And he invites us over on his back patio. Eggshells and all. Eggshells and all. <laughs> Crunchy coffee. <laughs> Amen. Good Amen. to see y'all. I'm so glad you made it back safe. Good to be surprise, here. Surprise, surprise. Hey, um, but anyway, so... To, to rethink things that we that we kind of already have an opinion of and, and we think we already have covered the base and we know it quite well and then and then we begin to, uh, to to look at something and it jumps up at us and we begin to look at it in a different light and, and it, it's really exciting what God allows us to see when it's time to see it. That's kind of the most amazing thing is he shows us so much and as we learn and as we grow then he shows us a little bit more and we see the new things and we're like Wow, that's pretty amazing. I can't believe I didn't see that before when it wasn't time for our eyes to see it at the time. And so we, we grow and our faith grows and everything begins to transpire a little differently. And I was, I was reading this last week. You know, we, we meet people all the time. No matter what, every day, every place we go, we, we meet different people all the different time. And, and, and sometimes it's a, just a quick hi or... Or, or hello, or whatever, or God bless you, or maybe at the post office, or maybe at Walmart, or maybe you get stuck in line somewhere with somebody, and, and you have an opportunity to stand and visit with them for a little while. But, yeah. but we meet people all the time, and I was I was looking up some 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 information on the computer, and the, on the average, a person lives seventy eight point three years, and most of us remember the people we meet after the age of about five. Now, if you assume that you interact with about three people a day, and you do the math of 365 days a year and all that, that comes to about 80,000 people in a lifetime. 80,000 people in a lifetime. And as I was reading that, I was thinking, wow, that's, that's 80,000 opportunities. That's 80,000 times that that God puts in a place to be able to either connect with somebody that is a Christian or share what God has done with us in our life as a Christian or to learn from a Christian so that we might become a Christian. And I thought, wow, that's a lot of opportunities. That's, that's a lot of chances. And I was, I was thinking as we meet people, when we, when we meet somebody, let's say you get stuck in line at, at the grocery store or somewhere and you stand there, you get in a conversation with somebody, without a doubt, Sooner or later, the question comes going to come up, where are you, where are you from? Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially around here. <laughs> because we know everybody around here is from a different place. It's kind of like I was saying about the Mork and Mindy show. Even Mork was from the planet Mork. We all came from somewhere. We all came from somewhere. And as we connect that, as we begin, the reason we ask that question is because when we ask somebody, where are you from, we're actually kind of prying in to see how close of a life we've had together because a lot of times we'll find out that we live real close to somebody or maybe in the same town or grew up and went to the same school or something and didn't even know them at the time and now we're standing here talking to them and it, we, we come to this 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 idea of, of our lives and how, how closely they're intertwined and how closely they relate and, and all the different things that go on in our lives and, and the different people that we meet and the opportunities that we've had and it's like wow this is 
This is amazing when I stop to take a moment to really evaluate how God uses my life and connects it with all these other people. You know, we often make the statement of how small the world is, and it's a small, small world as a ride in Disneyland and all those things about how, how, how unique that is. But you know, I like, I like to look at new research. I love it when the, the, the psychologists and the archaeologists and those people decide that the Bible might be true. <laughs> or they discover something amazingly, amazingly we discovered this and the Bible has told us that all along and they finally figured it out. <laughs> well, this, this one really tops the charts for me. This one was one that when I read it, I thought I cannot believe they finally got to this point. One of the most provocative, now this is coming from a Fox News article dated December the 3rd of last year. And one of the most provocative and misunderstood studies, of, that, that's what gets me when they use words like they've been, they, now they've been studying it. They've been spending a lot of time working on this. I don't know how long they've been working. They've been working on it a long time. When I read it here, so they worked on that a long time. One of the most provocative and misunderstood studies of the year Scientists in the United States and Switzerland have made an astonishing discovery. All humans alive today are offspring of a common father and mother. <laughs> Adam and Eve, read the book. It's in the, it's in the second chapter. That is a real, that is a real study. I didn't make that up. That is real. <laughs> And I'm like, wow, that is that is amazing. That that they spent who knows how much time and how much money to discover a very, very, very unique introduction into God. We finally think, and it's provocative and it's misunderstood. And I thought. Now, they, you know, they're, they're advancing with this DNA thing and all the things they're doing, and they're figuring a lot of things out, and they finally figured out that you can't find a lie in here. You can't find nothing wrong in here. The more and the more and the more you discover, and the farther and the farther and the further you go, the more and the more and the more this becomes right. And God put us on this earth, and most of us will meet somewhere between 60 and 80,000 people in our lives. It's pretty, pretty amazing when we think of the opportunities that we have in our life. Go to John chapter 13 and verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another. I believe when I read that scripture, when I read that one verse of scripture, the message of Jesus Christ, all of his gospel message is right there in that verse. There's really nothing else to say. If we love one another the way he loved us, we're obeying all the commandments of God. And we're about hope abiding by the commands of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's not much more to preach. There's not much more to say. However, it's a far-reaching idea of being able to do that. Go on to verse 35. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. He doesn't say by all these things, let me give you a list of all the things you need to do that they'll know you're my disciple. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one to another. I think about that and I ponder that thought and I, and I know how I am Carnally, and I know how my human body reacts to things and I know how my mind kicks in and I know how things come about and so I asked my question as I was studying 
Is it even possible for someone like me to be able to comprehend at first the love that God has for me? Am I even able to get a hold of and wrap my mind and grasp the amount of love that Christ has for me? Because until I can do that, I can't love anybody the way that he loved me. Until I fully understand and comprehend how much he loved me, there's no way I can love somebody that way because I don't know what it is yet. And even when I do understand and comprehend and I get on my knees and I, and I pray and I ask him and thank him for the love that he has for me, how can I develop that within myself to be able to give to somebody else? How can I have that love overcome all of my carnal and my human things to where that I can love my neighbor the way that Jesus loved me? Is that even going to be possible? Is that something that, is, is it going to be just completely impossible, completely humanly impossible to do that in the state that I'm in? Go to Mark chapter 12. And verse 30. This is how it begins. And thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy heart and all thy soul and with all thy mind. And with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. You see, in order for me to be able to even comprehend, number one, I've got to learn to love God the way he commands me to. I've got to come to a place in my life and in my, in my being, in myself, not considering anything except my relationship with the Lord, and I have to find a place and find a way that I can love him with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind and all my strength. That's the first hurdle. That's the first, the first grasp. That's the first understanding. That's the first part of learning to love my neighbor the way he loved me. We sing that song, Because He Loved Me. Our spirit just yearns to, to grasp a hold of that. And as we grow, we do grasp a hold of it. As we, as we spend more time in the Word and spend more time with the Lord, we begin to understand how much He loved me. You know, I, I had a, a thought about this um, I've seen a little video about a guy talking about his mother. And we, we see a lot of videos and a lot of things on Mother's Day when people talk about their mom and the tears come to their eyes. And, and I think about my mother and all the things that I didn't do right when I was a kid. And all the things that I should have done that I didn't do. And all the things that later on in years after I had done it, I would confess to my mom what I had done when I was younger as we were sitting around the table talking. And it seemed somewhat funny and we'd laugh about it. When I know at the time it must have hurt her terribly. But she would sit and laugh with me at it years later. And it causes us to have such a reverence for our mother because she's so forgiving. And all the things that I did wrong and all the things that I did against her will and all the things that I did, she never once. Well, she whooped me a few times. <laughs> She never once considered disowning me or sending me off and never speak to me again or none of those things never entered her mind. To the day of her last breath, she loved me. That's how Jesus loves us. He doesn't hold it against you. He doesn't look to hold something in the back so when you get in trouble, he can remind you of what you might have done wrong at one time. In the midst of all the things that we did wrong, He loves us through the midst of it all. And as we begin to understand His love and we begin to come into relationship with Him, He just forgets about it all. We ask Him to forgive us of our sins, and He says, what sins? I don't remember any. You ask for forgiveness and I forgave you. And it's real. And it's tangible. And it's eternal. It doesn't come back to bite you later. That's the kind of love that God has for us. Now, how do we convey that to my neighbor? Now that I can understand it and I know who God is and I understand how he loves me and I can relate it to something tangible on this earth and realize how much bigger and broader it is than even my mother's love, how do I share that with God? How do I convey that the way God would have me to do it, the way he instructs me to do it? Is it even possible?
seems completely reasonable that we can't know that kind of love until we've experienced it. But go to First John chapter 4. Verse 20 and 21. <laughs> and we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true and we are in Him that is true even in His Son, Jesus Christ, that is the true God and eternal life. You little children, keep yourselves smiles. Amen. We know and we understand. We get a grasp of how much God loves us. We we understand that. We feel that in our spirit. We get, well, we, I got God books. We know it. We felt it. We've experienced it. We live in it. We walk in it. So how do we convey that to our name? In, in, in my understanding, in my little cowboy mind, I can't. It's not humanly possible. But it is spiritually possible. Because God loves my neighbors, regardless of who they are, where they come from, what they do, I can too. When I look at them in the eyes of a mother or a father or a savior, because he loved me, because he loved you, because he loved you, because he loved you. Not only because he loved me, because he loved all mankind. And the joy and the, and the happiness that I experience in knowing his love for me, I can allow him to share his love with others through me by unselfishly allowing him to use me as his vessel. And knowing that my opinion and my thoughts don't count. How I feel about somebody is not important. It's one of the 80,000 opportunities I'm going to get to share the love of Christ with somebody, and I need not mess up too many of those. I can look at it and relate to it in a way that it makes sense to me. God put me here. He loved me. He died for me, and he's going to give me 80,000 opportunities to tell him how much I love him by telling my neighbor I love them. And that's what he commands us to do. And that's exactly how simple and how easy it is to do. Is to remember it's not up to me to determine the worth of another human being. That's his. Wherever they are, whatever they're doing, 